Welcome into Wager Talk TV. I am Drew Martin, joined by Las Vegas Chris and Tony Finn from wagertalk.com. We're talking NFL action here, the New England Patriots and the San Francisco 49ers as we head to Foxborough, Massachusetts in Gillette Stadium to talk uh, the Patriots laying two and a half at home here, Las Vegas Chris. We got a total of 45. What are you thinking with the 49ers and Pats? You know, I forgot this was Jimmy D G's uh, return to New England, and uh, Kyle Shanahan's return. Uh, so uh, San Francisco should have uh, some motivation behind them. Um, my metrics on the side come out pretty close. There's not enough discrepancy. I, I do want to comment. Very strange last Sunday. Uh, the line movement just plummeted right before game time. And uh, uh I ended up actually playing a little bit uh, and releasing a 2% play at the last minute when it, it dipped down to a seven. Uh, it, it was really strange that fast, hard money right before kickoff within the last 30, 45 minutes. And then they just laid such a turd sandwich. Uh, it, just very odd. I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, you, you don't see that too often, but What's painfully evident with New England is they, they don't draft for speed. They have no speed in that lineup. Running backs, wide receivers. What's Cam Newton supposed to do? I mean, he can't do it all. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to be funny. If you look at the highlights of these guys moving around, trying to get open, doing whatever they're doing, it's like molasses compared to other receivers and other personnel that other teams have. Uh, he can't he, he can't move the ball by throwing it. So he's got to run it. It's going to eat up clock. Uh, and when you look at San Francisco, they're pretty much the same way. Apparently, Mostert's out. I see him out. If you look at the last game, as soon as he left, all of a sudden, San Francisco couldn't do anything. And Garoppolo's not doing very well in the air. Uh, they're basically... Uh, uh, you, you know, relying on, uh, you know, wide receivers, you know, coming through uh, or Kittle and that's it. Uh, so uh, they, both teams rush the ball. Well, they both have good defenses. They're, they're number six and number nine in, uh, defensively. Uh, they're so, so offensively. Uh, they're both about equally healthy. Uh, you know, it, it, the only thing that I can say, I, I was talking about the game this morning with Tony, and and, and I, I I like the under. Uh, the side is, you know, who knows? Okay, so looking towards the under there of 45. So we got the, the total in the mid-40s here, Tony. Do you agree with Las Vegas, Chris, and also anything on the side? Well, I think anytime New England is playing with the personnel they have right now, as Chris described quite well, that no speed. Cam Newton is the offense right now. They they don't really have a running game per se, other than Cam. Cam typically leads the team in rushing. Last week, 75 yards rushing. Actually, last week, I think his rushing yards were more than any of the receivers had receiving the ball. And wow. I, I, we can, there's a couple of things we can, we can, there's a couple of schools of thought when it comes to New England. One of them is that, you know, they're, and kind of in a re, not a rebuild mode, but they're kind of rejuicing and they're trying to figure out who they are. They don't have, they really don't have, they didn't do anything offseason free agent wise as far as receivers go and pick anybody up. They lost a couple of key defensive players, whether they were traded or whether they opted out. And Cam Newton may have been, without Cam Newton, guys, I know we can speculate and we can prognosticate what we want, but I'm guessing that without Cam Newton, they would be, uh, they may be, would they, they, be they wouldn't, it would be a, well, they, I'm not going to say that we winless, but I'm saying that this game, under the circumstances, how poorly they played last week and how well San Francisco played, I think the line is much different. I think it's already moved. I think I saw an opener of five and a half, some shops down to two and a half or three and a half in this game right now, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. here, here, listen, let's let's play the other school thought, and that is that New England had, you know, they had didn't have much practice due to the, some of the COVID nineteen protocols that were in place when they had some guys test positive, whether it be players or whether it, whether it be staff, uh, they're playing behind a makeshift offensive line um, with guard. Uh, I think it's uh, Shaq Mason. He's out with a calf injury and, and center James uh, Fritz. He's on now on the COVID list. I mean, 
this is not a team that's prepared to uh, do battle with the likes of a Baltimore, a Kansas City, a Green, um, a Green Bay, a Pittsburgh. People that can put point, uh, teams that can put the points up, uh, they can't compete. They cannot compete. They have to defend. So, what they're doing offensively is trying to control clock, time of possession. They're running the ball as much as possible. And I would agree with Chris probably. If, if I'm going to be on this game, um, it, it's difficult for me to believe that all of a sudden overnight the San Francisco 49ers um, went from how they performed against Miami Dolphins where where Jimmy G was running for his life. I think when he getting sacked nine, seven, nine, 25 times. I don't know what it was, but it was too many. To last week, hold not getting sacked once with maybe the best defensive rush tackle in the NFL. Um, Donald didn't do anything. The Rams laid an egg. The Rams are not going to outscore people. They're going to play defense. They did a pretty good job second half. They lose the first half. San Francisco wins. San Francisco travels three time zones. They go to a place where Jimmy G's familiar with. They go to a, a, a location the coach is familiar with. And New England's really – New England's behind the eight ball in this game. In truth, the number's probably right. It is New England. It is Bill Belichick. If, if someone can figure out how to take what they have and make the best of it, Bill Belichick can and probably will. I'm completely and utterly out of the room on this game. If, if, if this game's being discussed, I'm not even within shouting distance because I want nothing to do with it. Uh, and if you put a gun to my head, I might just say, shoot me. Don't make me make a decision here. Just shoot me. I'm off. Yeah, oh, I, you Tony. Know, I, I would like to add, I, I think, uh, you know, Cam didn't have time to practice last game. Uh, yeah. He might have had some sort of after effects of uh, having the COVID. Uh, uh, you know, every write up or opinion of the previous game against Denver is giving him a free pass. Uh, if, if I had to pick a side, I would take New England. I, I just uh, I, I feel like San Francisco got up for the Rams. Uh, I, I think the Rams are a better team and the Rams were flat. San Francisco was up. They're traveling East Coast. If you, I would lean toward a much, much better performance by Newton, but uh, defense is going to lead the way. Yeah, and Chris, yeah, I 100 percent agree with you. I mean, what, watching Cam Newton last week, you know, he would have like bursts of speed, and then when you watched him get up for whatever tackle or you know, falling out of bounds, he would get up so slowly, like he was tired. Now I know that you know sometimes motivation with Cam Newton can be in question. Not you know, not his athleticism, but it did look like something was a little off with him last week. It will be interesting to note if he kind of bounces back this this past weekend. But Tony, did you want to throw out anything in conclusion? No, I, I agree. I mean, like I said, I, if I, I'm not buying what San Francisco did last week as being the end all, and now that's who they are. I'm not. I agree with Chris. I'm not buying that, and and I'm also not buying that that New England's going to show up like they did last week and get beat by a, essentially a rookie quarterback and uh, uh, second string. I hate to call Lindsey a second string running back. He probably would. He probably might hunt me down. And uh, strangle me for doing such a thing because he's a pretty he's a pretty cocky, arrogant son to you know what uh, little Lindsey is. And uh, but this isn't a very good. De- I mean, this is a Denver team that's it's okay. They're going to win some games that they they probably shouldn't. And I need them to because I have future on. I agree with Chris. <laughs> All right, he's Tony Finn, Las Vegas Chris as well. And guys. Reminder here, as you're seeing on the scroll, they're number one and number two all time lifetime at wagertalk.com. That's NFL profit wise. They're up over 430%. You can get a two for one deal on their two packages full season here. It includes the whole regular season, the playoffs all the way through the Super Bowl. Any props that they might throw out there for the Super Bowl, you get it all for one price, two for one deal wagertalk.com both of them combined up over 430 percent check them out tony finn las vegas chris wagertalk.com